touched down. Back on road, counting money, man. You know how it goes. Hit the vip and tell my strike a pose. Hop in mode, hop in mode. Touchdown, man. We back on road, spending money, man. You know how it goes. Hit the vip and tell my strike a pose. Hop in mode, hop in mode. Don't forget, set the bar, stick to the code. Yo, yo, this your boy Q Bar, and y'all already know I'm the host of the Barcode Podcast 414. And if you don't know today, well, now you know. But, man, I got a very special person, man, that pulled up to the podcast, man. He's been my mentor, I want to say, since I was about 14, 15. They kicked their ass, and then I went to go join. So I, I, I did the LeBron back when I was in middle school. I shipped teams, man, and I pulled up to the scholars, man. But he a very special person, man. Y'all uh, give it up for my boy, Keith Bearden, man. How you doing, bro? I'm doing fine, man. I'm doing great this morning. And it's okay, hot yeah. ass city. <laughs> yeah. You say hot. Like, which yeah, hot, hot, though? Is, it's hot as ever here right now. Oh, okay. I was about to say, because you know I'm in Arizona. It's, yeah. It's, like, it's been like 112, 113, 115, like. So yeah, it's, about, yeah. it's about 90 here right now and it's humid. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's what yeah, we got the dry heat. We got the dry heat. But before we get into the show though, Keith, man, I gotta give you your flowers, man. He is the founder of the Wisconsin Scholars AAU program. He's a mentor and he's a math teacher currently right now at Blessed Savior East Campus, located on 55th and Villard. Man, I, I appreciate you so much, uh Keith pulling up, man. You know, this means a lot to me, you know. I started playing AAU with you guys, I think, going into my ninth grade year, I believe. Uh, eighth or ninth grade. Yeah, it was like eighth or ninth grade. Yeah, like eighth grade. And we still a fam. I still talk to you. I still talk to your brother, Brian. I still talk to Don Trail. I still talk to Brandon. You know, Q, No, DeWan, you know, the whole Scholar family. So I want to let you know, you hearing it from me, Keith, that I appreciate you for just like, like just, just like just being such a great person and allow me to not just come to your your AAU program, but allow me to come to the Scholar family. I do mean that. Yeah, man, it was it was it was it was a uh, nice addition, man. I'm gonna say this: um, you you changed the dynamic of our team, and um, I'll just say this: it's our team was more than a team; it was a family, and the fact that you all still communicate. What is this? Probably twenty years later, um, it, it's crazy, and and that was that was my goal to to not only just have a basketball team, but to create like a family atmosphere with the with the boys I was uh I was coaching. Yeah, yeah, and you definitely did that, man. We still tight. Yeah, but before we get into you know your coaching journey and everything, uh, I have some trivia for you. All right, I'm gonna just ask a few questions. All right, and and. and and look, be mindful, y'all. Keith is really not shy. He's trying to be shy because we on a podcast. But hopefully these questions warm him up, man. So I'm asking a few questions, and you just choose. So the first one is, would you rather eat a butter burger or an impossible burger? Impossible. You already know, man. I'm a vegetarian, Quinn. Come on now. <laughs> you already know. Okay. What, what, uh, what season would you like? Summer or winter? Summer all day. Summer, man, you summer just said it was hot and humid. Man, I, I could care less. I'd rather be outside. I'd rather have my windows open. I, man, summer all day. I'll take 90 okay, okay. over 40 all day. Okay, okay. All right, this is going to let me know if you're a hooper. Adidas or Nikes? Nike all day. Oh, okay, see, you're a hooper. Okay, yeah. you're a hooper. Last, thing, last question, Keith. If you had to get a point guard and it was two left, who you picking up, Dontrell Terry or Brandon Brown? Brandon Brown. Brandon Brown. Uh, yeah. Brand, Brandon was, for me, Brandon was the coach on the basketball court. Um, he rarely made mistakes, um, hardly ever hurt our team. Uh, and that, that's not to say that Don Trail couldn't play point, but for me, it's, it's a matter of, you know, limiting the mistakes you have on the court and just, you know, just running the team. Yeah. Yeah, man. Sh shout out to my dogs, man. I had to, I had to do that because I know they're going to watch this. And after they watch this, they're going to call each other and talk crazy to each other, I'm pretty sure. So, 
Yeah, but that's it for the trivia, Keith. Thank you for participating in that, bro. Now, the first thing I'm gonna ask you is, Keith, because we a lot of a lot of a lot of people in our community know you from hooping at Deneen Park, you know, all these different parks. And did you get a chance to play high school basketball? Uh, and you know, that's the that's the crazy thing. I've never played on a basketball team. N- never. Grade school, middle school, high school, I never played. Uh, and it, and well, grade school and middle school, my team, my school didn't have teams. Okay. So like I went to, I went to Sherman grade school. They didn't have a team. I went to Wilbur Wright, which is now MSL. They didn't have a team. And then by the time I, I got to high school, I really didn't know how to play at all. I, man, I was really terrible. Uh, and I got cut my freshman year. And so that's what got me into coaching because I, I wasn't really good as a, uh, as a teenager. Wow. And you know what, Keith, that's so crazy. Cause if you I know a lot of y'all know Keith and a lot of y'all don't Keith can actually play basketball. So you would consider yourself a late bloomer then, right? Cause I, when I came to the scholars, you dribbling, you high IQ making the threes. Like I seen you shooting, you know, far at a young age, like before Curry and everything. So that, yeah, yeah. man, I, I say I was I was Curry before Curry was Curry. <laughs> it, that's true, y'all. Now, now, I always troll Keith, but I'm gonna give him his flowers today. He definitely used to be shooting f- far as heck, man. You know what I'm saying? So definitely can play ball, man. And and for those that don't that don't know, tell us about your upbringing because you you know you have a you have a big family and y'all very very tight. So tell us a, a little bit about your upbringing. Yeah, um, man, I grew up in Milwaukee. Uh, most of my life was on 47th and Burleigh. Uh, well, from 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 sixth grade, uh, we moved to 47th and Burleigh. So I was in the, in the St. Joseph uh, Sherman Park area. Uh, I got uh, two brothers and three sisters. Uh, we uh, lived in pretty much a single family home with my mom. Uh, my brother is deceased now. My, my brother Maurice he died in 2019. But yeah, man, my family is is really close to me. Um, yeah, man, I, man, I love my family. Yeah, yeah, I'm already knowing. Yeah, y- y'all are very close. And and for those who are watching, I forgot to bring this up. Um, Lamonte Bearden and Brian Bearden, that uh, Keith Bearden, that's uh, them his nephews, you know. So, and we gonna of course get, you know, into that, you know, whatever the case may be. But I remember you were telling me a story too, Keith, where because you hooped at a lot of parks. I know you didn't get a chance to play high school basketball or anything like that. And, um you start playing at all these different parks and you don't have to get into detail, but you did play at Marcus the back park and you seen that situation actually happen with him losing his life. And when you seen that situation, Keith, did you start your a, did you start the scholars after you seen that? And the reason why I'm asking that is because he was such a, he was such a young man. And I know that you, a mentor or whatnot. I didn't know if you started the AAU team like after that to like bring the kids, keep them out, you know, from the streets and all that type of stuff. Well, I, I actually, I, man, I, like I said, I started coaching when I was 15, uh, but I was only coaching, I was coaching the MPS. And then uh, I want to say two years later, I switched over to coaching Catholic school. Um, and then shortly after that, I started what you could kind of say was AAU, coaching AAU. But the scholars didn't come along until after. I want to say it's actually around the same time as uh, the incident with uh, with Marcus. Yeah, man, I was I was on the playground when that happened. Uh, and I'll be honest, man, I think I've only been up there maybe three times since that incident with Marcus happened. Wow! And you, when you mean three times, you just talking about around like at that time three like three no, times or like, just three times since, like since the since, park been there. Since that incident, um, which has been about 25 years, I've probably only been on that that playground probably three times since that happened. It was it was kind of wow. hard for me to go back up there because, like I said, man, I was I was on the court when the, when the whole incident went down. Uh, just seeing him, uh, seeing what happened, yeah, it was it was it was, it was tough, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm already knowing that was tough, man, and it's crazy because when you told me the story. Like, I remember when that happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, 
I want to say me and him was around the same age. So when, when that happened, I know, think you were a little bit older than him. When that was happened. I older? I think I think so. If I was older, it might have been like one or two years, I believe, Keith. Maybe three. I don't know. But I remember when it happened, though. We was, you know, at that age, you know, we was young. We like, whoa, yeah. hold on. He lost his life to gun violence. Yeah. So yeah. you might have been maybe one year older because now that I'm thinking about it, uh, I think he was in this. Yeah, he was in the same class with, with Mark. Well, not actually in the same school, but uh, with Mark West. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, you, you're about the same age, maybe a, maybe a year older. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, OK, you started coaching at 15. What year was the year that you started the Wisconsin Scholars, though? Uh, scholars started. I want to say 2002. Um, so again, I had we were we were called the the uh, when I first started we we were called the Milwaukee Panthers, and then I switched over because I started getting kids outside of Milwaukee. We switched to Wisconsin Panthers, and then uh, I was working with uh, uh, Rachel Hampton and Kevin Randolph, and. Uh, what made me change the name was I was I was showing off the report cards of the players because like pretty much every player on that team had like good grades. Yeah. And I was showing my principal. And uh she was like, Oh, you got a bunch of scholars on your team. And so that's what, you know, when she said it, the light bulb went off and I was like, Man, I'm gonna switch my team name from the Panthers, which was, you know, whatever, to scholars, because I felt like it it represented more than just basketball, you know. Because the goal has always been for me to try to get as many kids into college, you know, whether it's with academics or basketball as possible, and just use basketball as a as a as a tool um, for that goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely. Now, was that something that you and Rachel started? Like, because you used to show off the report cards, right? But was yes. that something that y'all like? That was the blueprint. Where it's like, okay. In order to play for the scholars, you got to have good grades. Yes, and so um, we we kind of transformed what we were doing when we went from Panthers to uh, scholars. So it was more of you know checking grades. We were checking grades, checking academics, uh, contacting. And Rachel did a lot of this work. Um, she would she would contact the schools, you know, just check on on players' behavior. Because again, it was it was more than just basketball with us. It was it was you know, the school aspect of it. And that's that's why the, the change was made. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we already know Rachel was pulling up. She didn't came to oh, Vincent yeah. a million times, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. Quentin Barfield to the office, please. I'm like, yeah. who the hell here? Why is my mama here? You know, <laughs> and it's, yeah. like, oh, it's mama 2.0. Yeah. Acting up in class. No, no. Oh, so she lying. He lying. You know how Rachel So he lying? We're not, what, what, get you, get it together. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, snap. So if y'all, Rachel Hampton, love you so much. You already know that. And the rest of the crew, too, though. You know, we had B, we had Coach um, Coach Randolph, rest in peace, Coach Randolph. We had Mr. Brown, the yeah, lieutenant, Randall's the sergeant. Dad. <laughs> yeah, Randall's dad, man. Man, uh, was a big part of our early success with the scholars, man. Because – Man, he was, you know, he was, he was, he was opposite of me. Like, you know, I was, you know, laid back and calm. I didn't really, you know, get on, get on players like that. But Mr. Brown and, and uh, Kevin were always on, on y'all. Like, and so it kind of, it worked well because like I said, I was like the calm one and they were, you know, more of the. Uh, the militant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I remember my first day of practice and, you know, key. Okay. We had to do the line drill, touch the line, come back, do the push-ups. I'm like, hold on, bro. What we on in here? <laughs> what is – hold on. What's going on? This is what we do for real in practice? Like, we had to do line drills with push-ups. I'm like, okay, Mr. Brown on one. But shout-out to yeah. Mr. Brown and the rest of the crew. You know, we can't forget about – um, rest in peace, Miss Clayton. You know, yes. when I when I came around, Miss Clayton was around. Uh, Nisi. Uh, was Daryl mom name? I'm sorry. I forgot. Deidre. Yeah, Deidre. Uh, who else we had? We had your brother Brian. Uh, who were those parents? Who were? It was a lot of parents helping out. So, did you form that team together, or it just start like pieces? Just, as y'all grew, pieces so, just start falling falling into so, place. So, 
so for me, most of the team was a school based team. Like it, it was, we were AAU, but a lot of the players were from my school team because I coached at at the time of St. Stephen's, uh, and so, you know, I just I just started adding pieces to that group um, mm-hmm. of school players. But man, I, I'll say this: when when I recruit, and even to this day, um, when I recruit, man, I don't just recruit players; I recruit play- parents too, because I got to know that it's you know for the most part it's going to be some parent support, and so that was that was a big part of any success I had with any team, like recruiting the parents as well as the players. Like I would, in some cases, take a player that wasn't as good, but if, if it was parent support there. It would, it would, it, it made up for it. And then the, the fact of if, if you were able to work hard, uh, that made up for it too. You didn't necessarily have to be the best player to play for me. You just had to have a will to get better. Um, yeah. And then also had a, the parent back, the parent backing. Yeah, yeah, and that's one thing you did really, really good, Keith. Because you know, for for me, I always tell Trail and them this that we come from a different era. Because when I joined the scholars. Like we did fundraisers, we did car wash, you know, we did car wash, we did a whole bunch of stuff, you know, to provide money for the AU program so we can, you know, travel out of state or whatever the case may be. And you did a real like it was just so many parents there. So you seen the support there. So the 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 question that I'm gonna ask you next, uh Keith, is I noticed you just said development. It's a lot of players that started off with you that wasn't as good like a like Flavian Davis. You know, you had, you know, not saying that Steve Gruber didn't want good, but you had these guys before their names, you know, getting, you know, big. So once you get these, these players start off with you, Keith, and you had a Flav, and then you get another AAU program that's bigger than the scholars, like a like a Rebels or a Playground. And they and the parents take them from the scholars and take them there. How did that make you feel after developing that, them players? Um, I'll say this: that was that was part of the reason why I stepped away from basketball. So I stepped away from basketball for five years, and I, I actually I just came back this year. Uh, so it was kind of tough because like you you put all those hours in, and you know you, you take a lot of time from stuff you could be doing. Um, but yeah, like I mean, there were there were quite a few players that played that's you could say started with me and then ended up going somewhere else. Um, and I mean, it's cool because at the end of the day, they accomplished, you know, what they needed to accomplish. Like, you know, who's to say, you know, JR, if JR Morris would have stayed with me that he would have gone on to play, you know, play at Seton Hall and play overseas. So in that aspect, you know what, it, it happened the way it was supposed to happen. And that's how I look at it. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm glad you mentioned Jr. because you coached you coached a lot of good talent, Keith. Like you had a Jr. Morris, you had your nephew, the Beard and Brothers. Yeah, you, Jerry Smith uh, played him before. Jerry second. Smith started off with you. Steve Gruber. Yep. Flav. Yep. It's a lot. It's a lot. Steve, Keith. Steve McCorder played with me. Um, yeah, man, I, there has been quite a few very good players that have played for me. But at the end of the day, it, it wasn't necessarily about having the very good players. Like, um, yeah, it was man, it was it was about just trying to get kids to uh, to to you know accomplish goals, to go to college. You know, to you know my my biggest thing is Quentin, man. I needed to set an example, and I think I told you before. Like my number one thing that I I look back at the teams I've coached. Man, you all have grown up to be great young men that take mm-hmm. care of your kids, man. And that that's that's big for me. Like that, that you like you're in your son's life and and for the most part, every every kid that I've coached is like that. Like that. Yeah, most definitely. Every and, and that's one thing why I appreciate, you know, you, the other staff, and uh my peers that are around, because we all kind of like, you know, built built character. You know, y'all, y'all built character in this. You know, even though I was a hot head sometimes. You yeah, know, you remember were. that? Uh, remember that game in Nationals, and uh, it was a nail biter, and I pushed dude off the free throw line, and uh, I think I got ejected. 
And then you came to the hotel the next day and showed me the write up that they had on me. I think it was a Kentucky Who Fest. You remember that? Yep. He was like, yep. man, you never know who watching you, Q. You know? I'm like, dang, you right. Dang, I was a high head, Keith. How did you deal with me, bro? Man, I told you, man, I was I was the calm one in the bunch, man. So it's it's man, just being level headed, man. That's just always how I've been. You know me, I, man. I've never, you know, and that's not to say I never swore at, at you know and did that kind of stuff. But man, I just I just felt like you don't have to to cuss and swear and and yell to be a solid coach or to get your point across. Because at the end of the day, what kid wants to go out there and not do well? There's no yeah. kid on the that I mean, nobody knows no player wants to go out there and not do it. And so I just felt like, you know, address what what they did wrong, you know, talk to him like a young man and, and and fix it. And I think I've been pretty successful doing it that way. Yeah, very, very successful, Key. Yes, yes. And I played for two AAU teams, right? I was young. And when you young and you gotta make decisions. Like we kids, it's hard for us to make decisions. But my heart was with with the Wisconsin Scholars. But I played some tournaments with Playground Warriors. You as a coach, Keith, and you being so loyal, how you feel about kids playing for two AAU programs? Uh, back then I didn't like it, but now I mean it doesn't really bother me. Like it doesn't it doesn't bother me as much. But back then, you know, old school AAU. Like man, you had to play for one team and one team only. Uh, again, it doesn't it doesn't bother me as much. Okay, okay, yeah, and 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 back to back to blessed savior because I always get this confused. So when you coached Dontrell and them, and y'all won Padres, was that blessed savior or was it a different name? It was a different name. Uh, so at the time, if I remember right, there were three schools combined. It was. Uh, I think it was Blessed Trinity, which was the old St. Nicholas. Uh, it was St. Stephen's, and it was Our Lady of Sorrows. Okay. And so if you look if you look back, you won't see Blessed Savior or St. Stephen's or or uh, Blessed Trinity. It'll say OLS, Our Lady of Sorrows, as the champions. And I want to say that was 2001. But it was a combination of all three schools. Um, we just went with that name. Okay, got you. And y'all got – Y'all had players from each of the oh, schools. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. From all the schools. And when you was coaching uh the eighth grade year, y'all won a very big tournament called the Padres. Yes. Right? That's your yes. first one that you ever won? Yep. That was the first one that um that I ever won. Yeah. It was man, two thousand one. Um, man, I had a I had a very good team uh that year. Uh Brandon was on that team. Uh Brandon, Marquez, Dontrell, Dewan. Uh, man, I hate it because I know I'm going to leave some people out. Breon Allen was on that team. Uh, man, that team was man, that team was very good. Very, mm-hmm. very good. Mm-hmm. Now, is that your – now, once you won that championship, was that – what? first of all, was that your first championship that you won? While as, far, at that school? as far as Padre, yes. As far but, as Padres, Padres. Yeah, but, yeah. but throughout the season, we won tournaments. Um, because in Catholic schools, like you play your – you play your league – uh, which is about 11 games. And then you, in eighth grade, you have four tournaments plus the Padre if you if you get invited to the Padre. So I don't think we lost a game that year. I think we were like 31 and 0 that year. Wow. I don't, that's a lot yeah. of games, Keith, yeah. in eighth grade. Catholic schools, you play a lot. You play a lot of games. Mm-hmm. By the time like, you're eighth grade, you play, you play about 30 games. Keith, that's like, that's definitely college, bro. Yeah. And that's <laughs> like, I know junior college for sure. Yeah, for me, that's kind of why I transitioned from from the public school to the Catholic school. It was it was just it was just overall better setup for me. Um, yeah, and I don't know, it just felt more like a high school atmosphere because you you weren't just playing at one location every weekend. It was okay. You might have home games, so you might you know you might have to go out to Waukesha or or or. or uh, Germantown or Menominee Falls, like it was just the setup was better. And then the fact that you just played more games, you know, I had left public school where I might've played nine games, nine league games, and that was it. And now you're going to 11 league games and four tournaments and, you know, so it was just a better setup. It was, it was more time to, to actually get a team better 
And so that's why yeah. I switched over from public to Catholic. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. And and with you not playing high school, Keith getting cut, not playing college ball, not playing overseas, but then you come coach and you win a championship. How did that make you feel winning Padres? Because Padres is a very big tournament. Like, I didn't hear about Padres until I met Don Trail now. And yeah. when I, you know, remember I worked, our coach blessed the savior. And remember we went to the Padres and fell yeah. short, but I'd seen how big that tournament was. So yeah, for you to win that, like, how did that make you feel? You know what? It, the, the, the big thing with Padre is you, you usually take your team from fifth grade. So like you get oh, your God. fifth grade team. And then the fact that you just, you see the growth from fifth grade all the way up to eighth grade, you just spent four years trying to get, you know, get to the Padre and then hopefully win it. Man, it was, I, I, I would say it was, it was a, a relief because going into that eighth grade year, we were one of the favorites to win. And so I'll be honest, man, it was a relief to win it at the end because I just knew, like I said, we were, we were one of the probably two or three teams that was supposed to win Padre. Mm. Okay, okay. So did y'all get a chance to play them? The other we two played, teams that were supposed to win? We, or, I think or we played I think we played one of them in the championship. Uh because I think on the because Padre is like a 32 team invitational. So like they okay. take like the best 32 teams, Catholic school teams from uh Southeast Wisconsin. So you know, you got teams from Waukesha, Racine, Kenosha, Milwaukee, uh Ozaki, like just Southeast Wisconsin. And uh we were the number one over overall number one seed that year. And so I think the other two teams were on the other side of the bracket. Uh, I don't know. So if they would have met up in like the championship. Yeah. The only way we could have played one of them was in the championship. We ended, I forgot who we played in the championship, but we played just one of the two other teams. Oh, okay. Yeah. Y'all had a whip, man. And if y'all had Breon, y'all probably had Brandon on that team too. His little oh, brother. Brandon, Brandon was, uh, he was, I want to say, the year behind because in Catholic schools, for the most part, you just play your. So it's each grade has their own individual team. So fifth grade has a fifth grade team, sixth grade, sixth grade, seventh oh, grade. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's it, how I go. It usually, okay. Yeah, usually if your enrollment is solid, you just have the eighth graders only playing eighth grade. But the okay. crazy thing, the crazy thing about that eighth grade team was in seventh grade they went to Padre. We, as far as I know, we were the only team to ever have a completely all seventh grade team go to Padre. And I think we lost in either the final eight or the semifinals. And after that happened, they kind of changed the rules. And it was like, nope, no more seventh grade teams can go to the Padre. You had to have at least, I think, two eighth graders because because teams were complaining like, why are you letting a seventh grade team into an eighth grade tournament? But we were playing an eighth grade schedule we played eighth grade the entire year. We were playing yeah. eighth grade schedule, and we were beating eighth grade teams. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 They okay. So y'all, y'all, the reason they changed the rules, huh, Keith? Okay. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Now, with you being an African American man, Keith, and playing in a Catholic tournament, did you? Was it difficult for you? Like, did they give you like a hard time because you was coaching a lot of black kids from the inner city? I would say. Certain places I went to, you could tell you, you, you know, and I'm not going to name schools or whatever, yeah, yeah. but, but you could just sense that it was different. Um, going to, to going to certain schools and it wasn't like every school, like there were some schools, man, it was, it, you know, you, there was nothing there, but as far as there may have been maybe three or three or four schools that we went to, you could just tell, um, yeah. Yeah, now now if the if your if your kids that you're coaching like kind of notice that they was getting treated differently, did you have that talk with them to help them understand like what's going on or I I did, but I also try my best not to buy into it in front of them. Okay. Um because I, I don't know, for me Man, your team goes how the coach, you know, goes how the coach go. If, and if, if I'm out here yelling and screaming and and, and, and cussing and fussing, man, the, the, 
your player's going to do that. And so that's why I've, I've always pretty much try to be um, pretty calm. Um, yeah, yeah. Coaching. That's not to say I'm, I, man, I've, I've gotten texts. Uh, man, I actually got kicked <laughs> out of kicked out of kicked gyms out of and stuff like that. But Hold on, Keith. You got kicked out of gym before? Oh, yeah, man. I'm, man, I, you're going to edit this, right? I almost got arrested <laughs> in it. I almost got arrested in Louisville, man, for threatening the referee. You did? Oh, he must have pissed you off. <laughs> Yeah, man, he told me to sit my monkey. Up. Well, he didn't say monkey. He told me to sit my ass down, and I was just like, man, I wasn't happy. Whoa. See, where's yeah. YouTube at Like when you need uh, it, man? Like I said, where's YouTube at when you need it? I need to see this footage. Yeah, well, I turned around and told him to sit his ass down and meet me outside after the game. And, man, I – <laughs> Yeah, man. No, no, you said what? Meet me outside. How old were you, man, when this happened? This was probably, I was probably about 30, 32, 33. That's that, what's name, Keith? That bird light coming out in you, dog. Yeah, man. (laughs) And it's crazy because I come back in the gym and I go back out and the police right there. They had called called the police on me. No, it's crazy because I only seen you. I seen you mad two times, Keith. Yeah. Um it's about to get me mad, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, one, one time I seen you mad, it was it was an AU tournament and you felt like we were the better team and we was bullshitting. And I just yeah. remember being in the huddle and I'm like, I ain't never heard Keith yell like this, y'all. Let's turn the fuck up, bro. Like I never heard you like get like get on us like that. So it kind of like, whoa. Maybe we are bullshitting. Let's turn up. But then the second time, I missed that fucking tournament. Went to go. Remember, I missed our I missed our tournament thinking like, man, they going to take care of that, man. Uh, they going to win that. And then I went to go play with the playground and then came back and you set me down the whole tournament. And I was so I was itching to get in like, dude, these dudes just like trash out here. Come on, Keith, put me in. And I'm glad that you did that, Keith, because when you did that, that planet in me as a young man at that time, and I remember it, I just remember how hurt the team was. Some was mad, and it was like, hold on, y'all. Y'all really love me, fam, and I really appreciate y'all accepting me to the scholars, you know, because y'all, they've been, y'all, they've been playing with each other for a long time. You know what I'm saying? So that, when you set, that, set me down and you was ignoring me and one talking to me, it shaped me real quick, Keith. Like, so I'm going to tell you that right now. So I was just like, whoa, hold on. So, but that was the second time you was mad at me, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And, and, and even when Rachel was mad at me, that's when I'm like, oh, no, I can't have Keith and Rachel mad at me. Yeah. So, okay, what I got to do? I, I'm, okay, I'm sitting on this damn bench. I'm clapping. Let's go, y'all. So I appreciate you because now yeah. I, I knew I was young, and, Keith. Yeah. And, and, and for me, man, it's about life lessons. Like, I would, man, and um, some people may not want to hear, man, I will sacrifice sacrifice a game for a life lesson. Like, yeah. I remember we played, and this was a Catholic school game, and I was coaching at the time, Monte and Brian, and they had did something real dumb in school. And we were in, I want to say it was a championship of a tournament. And I made them sit in the stands, man. I didn't care if we lost the game. Um, we ended up winning but it was about a life lesson. It wasn't about in that moment trying to win a game. Like, yeah. 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 And so, yeah. man, yeah. I'm, I'm about teaching life lessons, whether it's, it's going to cost a, a game or not. Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing about you, and that's why we all appreciate you and still talk to you to this day. So you coach middle school, but then you had a chance to coach at Dominican High School. What made you want to? take that route to coach at Dominican high school? Um, I'll say when I was younger, I always wanted to coach high school always. And, and I'll say when I, the first time I applied for Dominican, looking back, man, I was nowhere close to being ready to coach high school. No, it wasn't even close, but you know, when you're younger, you think, um, and I think Wallace was, Wallace was the coach at the time. And I think I applied for the freshman job. And I didn't get the job. And so, you know, I just, I started going to camps. I started, I started uh, going to other high school practices, you know, just to, to, to figure some things out and, and hopefully get better as a coach. And so 
I want to say maybe five or six years later, I applied again. And uh, I got I ended up getting a freshman job at Dominican. And then I think the second year, uh, uh, but it's crazy because I think Wallachon wanted me to coach varsity uh, as an assistant. But I, yeah. I, I didn't want to because I was still coaching at Blessed Savior. Or at that time, it might have been Mary Queen of Martyr or Resurrection Catholic Academy. Oh, and no. I just I just didn't want to give up the grade school because for me, I just I think that's the foundation for getting kids better. Like you see so many kids at the high school level with who don't have fundamentals. And so I was like, you know what? I'm a coach. Pope. I'm a coach at Dominican and I also coach at at, uh, at Blessed Savior. And so I was at Dominican for two years, man. I love coaching there, but it was just time wise. I just. It, it wouldn't work because I just really like coaching grade school. Yeah. And so, yeah. But I mean, I've coached at a, at a couple of high school. Um, I coached at Whitefish Bay. I was coaching girls at Whitefish Bay, uh, JV. Uh, I coached at Juno for a year with uh, Jamie Kep um, back when. Um, Tory Johnson, OG. Yeah, Tory, right. man. One of the only two times I've ever been dunked on. <laughs> ever. By a student. Man, I got dunked on by a player. In practice, man, we were doing the post-up drills, and uh, man, Tori dunked on me on the drop step. Man, I felt I was so embarrassed. <laughs> oh, well, listen, it makes two of us. When I was a sophomore, uh, I just remember Tori dunking on me at Juno, and I looked up, and his nutsack was on the top of my head. I said, "Oh yeah. shit! Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, dude can jump. Okay, I knew oh, he can yeah. jump, but I'm like, okay, dude can jump, like for real. Okay, <laughs> yeah. he did it in practice on me, man. He dunked on me in practice." But yeah, man, I, I, like I said, I, I coached at a few high schools. Coached at Tenor um, before they became uh, WIA. Uh, yeah, I, I coached. I want to say five, five different high schools. Yeah, what are you coaching at Martin Luther, like on the south side? No, nope, no, I didn't. I didn't coach at Martin Luther. Um, okay. Nope. Okay. Okay. So when you got when you when you first first applied for Dominican and. You didn't get the freshman job. Did that kind of like discourage you? Because you've been coaching for a long time since you was 15. You know what I'm saying? And you was trying to go to the next level. So when you got denied, were you like, whoa? It, I, I wouldn't say it discouraged me because, again, I was still pre, you know, pretty young. I was in my 20s. So it didn't necessarily discourage me. It just made me say, you know what, I got to get better. Um, there's some. It must be something I'm not doing right. Uh, and it, not necessarily maybe I wasn't doing right. I mean, the other candidates could have been better than me. Like, yeah. but it, it just made me want to to get better. And like I said, man, I, I didn't have the experience of playing to lean back on. I didn't have the experience of somebody coaching me. Like I, I never had a coach. So I didn't have that experience. So I had to I had to find ways to get better. So like man, I used to man, I used to watch hours of basketball. I was man, I was sitting, I was sitting writing plays down and just watching stuff they did. And man, it's crazy. And I hate to say this, it's probably gonna be kind of like man. I used to watch video games and 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 like even with the video games and, and and figure out how they were doing the plays on the video games. Man, I used to I used to really 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 be into basketball, where I yeah. I would pick up anything like anything. I would I would just Constantly, you know, be in the gym. Yeah, yeah, man. Keith, man. Keith, I want to let you know, bro. All right. I'm by you here, dude. I, I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. I love you, dude. Love you, you too, man. Man, thank you, Keith. For real. Like the other day when you didn't pick up the phone, I blew up the whole family. Like, dude, is Keith okay? <laughs> this is not like him not to call me back. I want to let you know that while you here, Keith, I'm giving you your flowers. And I thank you so much for sharing your story because Keith is shy, y'all. Fake shy, all right. On the phone, he got he got his laughing all day. You know what I'm saying? So, but man, I, I I appreciate everything that you did, Keith. I just want to say that. You know what I'm saying? Like, because yep. we don't say that enough uh, to each other. You know, uh, as uh, you know, us being black men. You know, and it's okay. It's okay, y'all, to tell you know your peers or you know another brother that you love them. All right, it's okay. Trust me. So when when you were helping out Coach Cap. And uh, Coach Wallace, Sean, you, how much did you learn? Because they were good coaches, yeah. right? So how much did you learn, you know, while helping them out? Um, I learned a lot, but I, I would say a lot of the stuff that I do today 
comes from Wallace Shawn. Man, I don't, I don't, I don't know if he gets enough credit for how good of a coach he is. Um, I think sometimes people just say he had the talent, or, or that, you know, the competition wasn't as great. But man, a lot of stuff that I do um, comes from Wallace Shawn. A lot of it. Okay, man. Shout out to Coach Wallace Shawn. Like, I remember you almost got me and Don Trill to transfer to Dominican. And that that would have been nice. Ah, uh, how many state championships Brandon got? Two, I think so. Yeah, I would have had two state championships. Yep. Uh, I love you. To, I love you to death, Ben Haley. But yeah, that would have been my starting spot, man. <laughs> you know. But but you know, I didn't transfer. I decided to stay at Vincent and lose. No, but uh, <laughs> and you almost got us to try to. We thought about Juno. That's how much we love you, Keith. We thought about Juno. And then we went to the open gym, man. No knock to Juno High School, but we went to that. We You got trail coming from Edge, man. You got – I don't even think Brandon even thought about going to Juno, but I think he came to the open gym. And then, you know, but Dominican got a nice facility, Mesmer do, and then Vincent. And then we go to uh, we go to Juno. We like yeah. one side. Yeah. Oh, like no, a dungeon. Dungeon. Uh, that's how shallow we was, man, as kids, man. You know, we like uh, – we got the chance to, like – be on the same team together, but we like ah the gym not really too nice. Ah, I'm straight, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, and I want to bring up my homeboy man. Shout out to my dog Tony man. Uh, I know you and Tony and uh, Jess man, y'all been friends for a very very long time man. Um, how how like tell us about y'all like relationship, you know y'all friendship brotherhood. Man, it's crazy because most people think we're the same age. But I'm 10 years older than them. Like, it's crazy because I was coaching at St. Stephen's when they were seventh graders. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but, it, it, you know, they played on – and me personally, I think that was the best team that 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 Blessed Savior, St. Stephen's, Mary Queen of Martyrs, Resurrection Catholic Academy, whatever school you want to call it. I think they were on the best team we ever had at that school. That team, man, that team was so loaded um, with talent. Um, both of them were on that team. Uh, Corlin was on that team. Man, that team was loaded. Uh, Brandon Joseph was on that team. Oh, Dude, B. Joe. Uh, yeah. I think Steve Smith was – man, that team was loaded, like loaded, loaded. Um, so yeah. even though my team won the Padre, man, that team had so much talent on that team. And I don't, yeah. I don't even think – and I mean, you know, maybe somebody can correct me, but I don't think Brandon even started on that team. Oh, B. Joe, yeah, Brandon yeah. Joe. I don't yeah. even think he started on that team. And I mean, you seen you seen Tony and Jesse play, man. Jesse, very solid player, man. He didn't start on that team. Like that team was very good. Yeah, yeah. So you got a chance to coach them, right? I was. I wouldn't say I was their coach. I was more because I had a younger grade, so I would. I would be in the gym helping out with them, but I wasn't their coach. Yeah, but but the, but for you, and first of all, people, I, Tony, I love you to death, but people probably think Tony older because he got more gray hair than you. Yeah. <laughs> well, not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Not anymore. But shout out to my dog Tony because y'all have a very very tight relationship, and uh, I got to get Tony on the podcast too because he was he was a very great mentor to us too. You know, um, got me, I want to say my second job ever, because my first job ever was at State Fair. But my second job was at um, Robert's. Robert's. Robert's Frozen Custard, y'all. It's, I think it's the new JJ's now, unless they change it to something yeah, else. But J, I think it's JJ's now. It's JJ's, on, uh, okay. On 60th and Appleton. Appleton, yeah, that's where it's at, man. I, and got to give Tony his flowers, because y'all have a very good relationship. And y'all both have, like, the same – like heart and desire that y'all want to just see these kids, you know, do well, you know, be a part of something and, and like just having the talks with Tony and in the little time when I, when we used to talk to Jess, you know, I, you know, I came late. So, but I remember talking to Jess, man, and, and, and all the encouraging words and that, you know, them being good mentors, shout out to my dog, Tony, man. And so you say you didn't get, you didn't get the coach, Tony. But, no, like I said, I was I was coaching, I think at the time, a younger team. But um, 
I would I would help sometimes during their practice. And of course, I you know I was always at their games because, like I said, man, that their team was very good. Like yeah, really, yeah, really good. That's what I'm saying. So y'all been cool that whole time since even since yeah since when? since his since Tony was in seventh grade because I was you know I was friends with his dad because okay. his dad dad his dad was Tony's coach. He was their their coach in grade. Okay. School. And so I think what, what helped it out was it was a time where his dad couldn't take Tony to, to uh, school. And because I used to work at Keith Avenue at the time, he was like, well, man, can you just, because Tony was going to Mesmer. He's like, well, can you just drop Tony off at Mesmer? And which, you know, Mesmer and Mesmer and Keith Avenue were close right. together. So I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I drop him off at school. You know, we just, you know, just talking to him while he was in high school, we got close that way. And then he ended up, uh, playing, uh, coaching. He started coaching oh. with me. And so, yeah, that's how we became, man, that's probably one, man, probably my best friend in life, man. Wow, Keith. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's how, okay. So you've been knowing him forever yep. since he was in, you know, since he was younger. Yep. But then when he decided to start coaching, or you coach and you called him, right? Yep, yep. Or, he, okay. started, he, he started coaching with me. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And here we are right now, y'all. It's 2023. And right now, Tony has the Wisconsin Edge AAU program, and Keith is a part of that, too. Correct. You see what I'm saying? The history, y'all. Longevity, yep. you know, and they still and they still holding it down, man. Like, yeah, I think Tony's <laughs> coaching sixth grade edge, and I had a fifth grade edge. You had a fifth grade. Okay. Yep. And how many grades did y'all do y'all have right now? And it's like three uh, or four? Like four? Uh, there's two fourth grade, there's a fifth, there's a sixth, seventh, because uh, DeWine has seventh, there's an eighth, there's a tenth, and I think there's four girls' teams. So, yeah, this is completely a program. But exactly. I'll, I'll make an announcement at the end of this podcast of things to come. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Come on, Keith. You know we talk, man. So yeah. I- I'm really excited for that. I can't wait for that one, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, when what, – what's the most – what's the most joy, Keith, that you get out of winning a basketball game? Uh, what's the most joy? I, w- I would say – the most joy I get is when I have a team that was not good or wasn't, I won't say not good, wasn't as good in the seat of progress. And I, I just look at Flavian's team. Man, that team was not really good in fifth grade. But by seventh grade, we were state champions. Like, and it's just just seeing that progress and that growth and just knowing like we all grew together. It wasn't like I went and and grabbed a bunch of kids and you know we we all grew together that's that's the joy i get from coaching like i don't know that's the joy i get yeah yeah i feel that keith and then flav uh flav i know you're gonna watch this bro we won state i think we gave you your first state right keith yes okay i know flav gonna be watching this man remember See, me and Flav go back and forth through text messaging when we on FaceTime, okay? Man, don't Flav, ask me that question. No, I'm not going <laughs> to ask you that question. No, but I am te- I know Flav going to watch this, so I'm telling Flav, Flav, we, Q-Bar, remember our group? You remember the phone call that me and you had, Flav? We brought Keith his first state, okay? We went through Madison, or what is it, Madison Spartans. Yep. Wolfpack. Randolph. Randolph. All right, I'm talking my snaps, play. Come on now. Love you, little bro. You know I do. Yeah. But um, no, that's so funny, Keith. Me and Flay be talking so much stuff though. And and and, and I know it's a lot of us, right? Who you still keep in contact with, Keith? Like, I know you still talk to me and Don Trail. Like, I want when people watch this, Keith, I want them to look, I wanna, I want them to see, I want them to know, like. Keith wasn't just out here getting players for talent. You still talk to me. You still talk to Don Trill and Brent. But who else are you talking to, Keith? Let them know. I'm giving you your flowers, baby. Right. Let's get it. Uh, okay, so 
from that team that I that I have a regular contact with are you uh, you and Dontrell more than anybody else. And Dewan, because uh, Dewan is coaching with the edge. Uh, but then, like, just over the summer, Quentin Noblin, um, Brandon. Brandon's come to the gym a couple of times and did workouts for me. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is that it? From that How team? often do you oh, talk Mark to J.R. Morris? Who? Uh, Mark West. Uh, from J.R.'s group, really just J.R. Um, that I've talked to every once in a while. Uh, from the next group, Flavian, uh, Devin. Uh, I'm trying to think who else on that team. Uh, Thomas. Uh, every once in a while, uh, Maddie. Uh, yeah, and then from the the team after that, of course, Brian and Monte, CJ. Uh, I see Chris Hall every once in a while. Uh, you say see who? Chris Hall. You used to coach Chris Hall that went to King? Uh, yeah, yeah. For, I want to say, maybe a year and a half. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. Chris Howell. Um, I have to give him a call. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, you said enough. Man, names, I was, I, I'm going to be honest, man. I was I was kind of upset when Chris left my team, man, because he was one of my favorite players, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, Chris. I like Chris, man. He, he, Chris he, can play some basketball. People. Yeah, yeah. He, he a good dude too. Yeah, did you you yeah. see that he like the uh is it the program assistant? Whatever he is, he at Marquette right now. He was shocked and smart. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris doing man, he a good dude, man. He really, really yeah. is, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think who else. Uh well, I you know you got Joe a chance Paul. to catch I mean I said catch. You got a chance to coach uh Devontae Cobbs, aka Jiggy. Correct. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, was. That's crazy because he was just, he was just at uh, not well, okay, because my son Michael lives two doors down, and he, like he and and uh, Tiz, his brother are, are good friends, so they were just at his house. Tiz and Devon were just at his house. What's that about a month ago? So there's still yeah. contact with uh with Tiz as well. Okay, okay. Hey, look, key. Tess, hey, listen. First, one, it's a podcast. Two, it's my platform. Three, we family. Four, I was just with Tess and Vaughn yesterday. Now, me and Tess, we every time we see each other, we just we bark, we bark, we bark, we talk crazy to each other. Who's the best player you coach? He think Who's it's that? him. I think it's me. Some people say Jr. Some people say Flay. I had a talk with you, Keith. Oh man. You I disagree, uh, but I do want to hear what you got to say. I'm putting you on the spot. Uh, who's the best? Uh, <laughs> best best player I coached. That's a scholar, though. Well, no, that don't count. So, then I can't a, say Tiz because Tiz wasn't. He was never a scholar. Yeah, he wasn't a scholar. Okay, best player you coach, Key. I'm sorry, not scholar. Uh, best player, best player I ever coached. Uh, and I know Quinn, you're gonna edit this because I ain't gonna say you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna edit it. Hey, look, like, I'm gonna edit the, Hey, no, I'm gonna edit, but I'm gonna make sure I record and say Quentin Barfield. So you'll it's gonna be like watching the Chinese movie or something. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's man, that's that's hard to say, man, because they're all different play. Man, it, it, come on, Keith. We man, nobody get mad when I say this. Oh no, they ain't gonna get mad. We ain't gonna get mad. It might be Jr. Man, Jr. Man, I'm not wrong. I'm not mad about that. Man, I'm I, a, not, I am not mad about that, Keith. Man, I love Jr. Jr. Again. JR would do some stuff, man. And I'd be like, dude, you ain't supposed to do that. Like he just Jr. did some, man. Yeah, Jr. I'm gonna say Jr. Man, Jr. Morris yeah. was probably the best player I ever coached, man. And Jay. and it's crazy. It's crazy because I'm sitting here saying that, and I'm saying. I wasn't even a good coach back then. And <laughs> so you, you know what I'm saying? So like I'm just thinking of and that's not to say I'm this great coach because that's not what I'm saying, but I'm just thinking like with the experience that I have now, man. I, you didn't I, have that yeah, back then. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't have that back then. Yeah. Yeah. But no, JR's not a bad pick, dude. You know, JR is one of my favorites, man, from you know, Wisconsin all the time, though. You know, one of my favorites, dude, is he always been a beast, bro. Silky smooth game, bro. Do hands big as a bear, bro. <laughs> Dog. 
<laughs> hey, you know who else I, I, that played for me, uh, Quentin? And you probably didn't know. Who? Marcus Landry, when he first started. AAU, fifth grade. Yeah. So when yeah. he left, you know what? So when he left y'all, because I played, because me and Marcus played on uh, the Young Lions together. Wow, Keith. Yeah. You had a lot of players, Keith, man. Yeah, Diamond Stone played with me for his first two years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, man, man. That, that team, I'll be honest, Quentin, that team would have been really, really crazy. But I just, I just, you know, I didn't want to have like 15 kids on the team. Yeah. And uh, at the time I had Diamond and Monte, you know, because they were, the, you know, the two players. But I, 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 I declined to coach another kid because I had so many kids that I wanted the kids to play. Yeah. You know who that kid was, man? Did you decline? Yeah. His mama, his uh, mama asked me in third grade if he could play with me. And I was like, no, I got too many kids. Can I take a guess? He's Let in me the take NBA two. right now. Tyrese man, Halliburton. He's, no, you got to think. That's with Jalen Johnson. Monte's group. Oh, he's with Monte's group. I said Jalen Johnson. But you said Monte's group. Yep. He's, he's a warrior right now. Jordan Poole? No, he's a big oh. man. Uh, what's dude name? Kavon Looney, man. Oh, shit. I, I would have had, had Kavon, Diamond, and Monte all on the same team, man, in third grade. and Because I worked with his mom at Granville. And she asked me if he could play with my team. And I was like, nah, I got too many players. I want, you know, I want all the players to play. Yeah. Wow. Well, you still coached a lot of great players, but that would have been nice to have that player oh, yeah. on your resume. Like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I had him for about three years. And, you know, yeah. Looney parents, like, to man. Me, like they great, dude. Great. Like, great. great. So, great parents, man. I can see them staying loyal. Yeah. And, I, and like I said, you know, when I when I recruit, man, I don't do. When I used to really get out there and recruit for AAU, Quinn, I would, I would sit in the stands – and like I would, you know, I would watch the players, but then I would also, you know, ask, you know, y'all know who they, who mama they is, you know, who's mom, you know, who's who's their parents. Yeah. And then when I would go and sit in the stands once I found out, and I would watch the parents to see how the parents act. So I, yeah, I, I sure wouldn't just, huh? I said make sure they weren't just like shoot the ball, baby. Yeah, yeah, man. I, 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 I man, I was. I was not only recruiting players, man. I was recruiting parents. Wow, Keith. Wow. Man, hold on, Keith. Don't hold on, don't drop too many gems, man. Somebody might try to steal your swag, man. Oh, you know? man. Yeah. But that is it. the most important thing, though. You have to recruit the parents. You know, we when you have these AU programs, you you gotta have your parents, man, um, active, man. Because I was just coaching Jiggy Elite what, last summer and yeah. You know, we reached out to, you know, the parents, and I think we probably had, like, maybe, dude, no lie, Keith, it threw me off. Like, maybe two parents there. And then, like, I'm taking all the things that, you know, the scholars taught me, you taught me. Like, I brought up fundraising. And these kids go to big schools, like high schools, bro. They looked at me crazy. Like, dude, ain't nobody going to buy no candy from me. I'm like, What? I'm like, y'all not popular in high school, bro? Like, I was done with a box of candy in one day, bro. Man. Yeah. So it, like, AU has changed. I'm like, whoa, y'all don't do fundraising? Like, oh, yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's kind of a it's kind of a, a thing people don't really do in their mind. I, I haven't done it. Um, and like I said, I just came back to doing AAU this year. And, I, man, I wasn't trying to do any kind of fundraising. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a new time. It's a new time. If you had to pick a couple favorite coaches that you felt like you, you know, you got your your coaching style from. What coaches would it be, Key? On on a as far as like coaches that I work with, or no, no, no it can be any just, coach, like NBA coach because you know, like Popovich, my favorite coach. Oh man, my my favorite my favorite coach of all time is Dick Bennett, man. Mm. Dick Bennett is my favorite coach of all time, man. I I used to watch hours. Of his defensive, um, his defensive uh, video hours. I would man, I would watch that over and over and over. Man, Dick Bennett by far is my favorite coach of all time. Okay, okay, yeah, my favorite coach all time in the NBA is Greg Popovich. 
but my favorite college coach of all time, Bobby Knight, bro. Oh, he, man, he would get on your ass, man. And, and, and sometimes some players need that, bro, for yeah. for, for you to get on them. Because if you don't, they slack off. And, yeah. and Bobby Knight wasn't with none of that. And that's yeah. why, and that's why I love him, dude. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and now, well, I got a few more questions for you, Key. Yep. One, you've been around this coaching, you've been around Blessed Savior for so many, many, many years, man. And uh you getting thirty two. You know, man, thirty two years. Yeah, man. Been at the school thirty two years. 32 years, man. Shout out to my boy Keith, man, and bless his savior. Hold on. And shout out to Aaron O'Donnell, man, holding it down. Sorry, I don't know her married name. But um, have you ever thought about like building a small facility where you can run AU practices and training sessions? Man, that would be my that would be my ultimate dream. Uh to have a facility. Ultimate. Like to to have to have a space to uh run tournaments, you know, to get up every day and go there as a job, that would be my ultimate, ultimate dream. Oh, man. that, Yeah, dude, dude, you're going to have to get our initials, like, somewhere in the building, though. Like, yeah, Jay, I'll, I'll put yours in the, in the boiler room, man. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. Yeah. On the real, on the real. And, and like I said, Keith, man, I appreciate you taking the time out your day, man, pulling up to the Barcode Podcast 414. I ain't going to take too much of your time, but I do got a, maybe a few more questions. I don't know. You know, sometimes I fib. So depending on how you elaborate, I might ask some more questions. But I do want to ask you this, though, Keith. Um, and uh, I remember talking to you about this and in, 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 in around this time. I know that it hurt your feelings because you've seen a bright future in your nephew. But your nephew, Lamonte Bearden, had a chance to go to a Division One college in uh, Buffalo, Buffalo, New York, um, the University of Buffalo. And uh, his freshman, sophomore year, you know, he did some great, real great things, Keith. You know, he went to the NCAA tournament both years, you know, played very, very well as a freshman and a sophomore name. Is ringing bells. Name is on the mock draft board. Had a really good chance of going to the NBA, but then he transfers to Western Kentucky, and you know, it's almost like he declined a little bit. How did you feel about when your nephew transferred from Buffalo? Um, I'll say this: I didn't know at the time. Uh, I got a I got a call and found out he was transferring. Uh, from Buffalo. Um, I think things would have been a lot different for Monte had he just stayed at Buffalo. Uh, like, like you said, man, he, he was, he was, he was hot at the time. Buffalo had never gone to the NCAA tournament. He gets there. And that's not to say he was the only reason why, but I mean, he was a big part of why, I mean, the team, the team was pretty good. Uh, and I don't know. I just sometimes the wrong people get in your ear and you take bad advice. And I think that's what happened with Monte. He the wrong people got in his ear. Um, and, you know, for me, Quinn, for the most part, man, I'm, I'm, I'm loyalty is big for me. Yeah. Like, and I, I just wish he would have stayed loyal to. Buffalo to Nate. I mean, because now you look at Nate, man, Nate is doing great things. And man, Nate's a good coach. Like I just I just, things I think things would have been different had Monte just just stayed at Buffalo and just stuck with who 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 stuck their neck out for him. Yeah, man. And I and I, I, I and I always want to ask you that key, you know, because you you got a chance to coach your you know, both of your nephews, you know, when you, you know, you had your, AU, I mean, your AU program, they got the chance to play for your AU program. And I know how tight y'all are as a family. So in making a big transition like that and you being such a great mentor, you know, I'm actually very surprised that he didn't, you know, give you a call or, you know, or, you know, whoever, you know, for advice, is this a good idea? What you think, you know, he just up and did it. But, 
Shout out to Lil Cuz. He's doing great things. Just won. Um, he won T. They won TBT last year, right? Yeah, they won TBT last year. They actually just played last night. Um, yeah. they won the first game mm -hmm. uh, last night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, shout out to Mate. He's overseas right now. You know, still good basketball career. I just want to ask you that because I know how close y'all are, and uh, he's he's doing good. You know, I talked to his mom Trina, his pops, his uncle. You know, his sister. Shout out to uh Bree. That's that's fam. So I always want to ask you that, man. And, and now, this is the last question, Keith. Before I let you go, all right. You bringing the Wisconsin scholars back? Correct. What made you bring yeah. the scholars back, dog? Come on, man. Um, you know what? If I I just looked at it, if I'm going to get back into coaching, I might as well bring the scholars back. So, uh, officially next month, the scholars will be back. Um, up and running. It's actually it is already, but uh, it'll be official next month. Um, we will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I believe nine teams going into next year. Yep. So yes, nine Wisconsin teams. scholars are back. Uh, and like I said, man, if I'm going to coach, I might as well do it as a scholar. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And and we're bringing the scholars back, Keith. Are you still going to stick to the same principles, checking report cards, and they going – I remember we had to bring our report cards to, you know, the Correct. gym. So, okay, so yes. that's still the same thing. So my, um, I'll say this. The difference this time is a lot of stuff that um, was happening with scholars in the background, uh, Rachel was doing. Rachel was doing a lot of the legwork, um, you know, of course, you know, people recognize me for for the scholars, but man, Rachel, Rachel did pretty much all of the work in the background. Yeah. Um, and and so this time what I, I want to have different people wear different hats this time. Um, so, yes, when you talk about the grades and the report cards, yes, that's going to be part of the program again. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, before the scholars, I think at, at max had maybe five teams. Oh, right now no. we're looking at we're looking at already about nine. No. Um, but I, I also want to say um, I would be very interested in anybody that that is really interested in helping kids and wanted to get into coaching. Uh, man, hit me up! Like, hit me up. Yeah, uh, there there are some people. That that weren't part of the scholars that I would really be interested in and in working with. I'm gonna put a name out there. Hope you're watching. Uh, <laughs> Billy, Billy, Billy uh, Mimmons, y'all. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, yeah, and there's other names out there, but man, I just I I want you know the 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 generations behind me to to get more involved, man, and and and, and and teach people what they know and, and talk about their experiences and, you know, college basketball and high school basketball and just reach back and, and help, help, help the young men that are out here right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that'd be nice, man. Um, to get like former players, you know, if they have the time to come back and help coach that play for the scholars, or like you said, just, you know, anybody that want to help the kids in the community, that'd most definitely be dope. And uh, far as far as staff, Keith, I want to know because I know, like when I play with you guys, we had a strong staff. You know, you got the Rachels, the Miss Claytons, Mr. Brown. Are are you you revamping all of that? You trying to get everything like new coaches, the uh, new staff to be behind the scenes to, you know? Yes, I am. I am. Yes, and and let me say this because I didn't talk about Miss Clayton, but it, it's crazy because you brought her name up a couple of times. Man, Miss Clayton didn't even have a kid on our team, and man, she would, she would, man. If we had fundraisers, she'd be right there. Like right if we there. had, man, she did a lot of work that she never had to do without having any kids on the on the on the team. Man, she just loved helping kids and and. Love being in the gym and watching the boys be successful. So, man, I wanted to I wanted to put that out there, man. Miss Clayton was was very helpful for us. Yes, very wonderful. And rest in peace to her. 
you know, her soul, man. She was very, very cool, y'all. Oh, man, just I don't forget anything. I just remember going into practice, and they just used to brighten up our days, man. And Yeah, man, I, I just love the crew, man. I still talk to Miss Nisi, you know, everybody, man, and I appreciate you so much, Keith, bro, pulling up. Uh, finally, man, um, so we can give you your flowers, man. You know, I have the platform and, and I'm glad that I was able to give you your flowers for real, Keith, because sometimes you don't know, you know, or, or all of us, we don't know, but you don't know, Keith, how, how many people out here respect you, you know, and the way that, you know, all the players that you have coached, man, the way we rep you tend to scholars, man, it's ridiculous. I'm telling you. Like we argue with these other programs left and right. Man, stop playing, man. We played y'all. We played y'all playground. Yeah. I always go back and forth with Billy. We played y'all in the state, bro. We would have beat y'all. Oh, yeah, y'all, yeah. my guy, yeah. with the Vince, but man, scholars, stop, like, stop playing. I always tell people this. Brandon Brown is the best point guard that I play with in my life. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Trill wanna, I put up a list, Keith, probably a couple years ago. My top five shooters in 2005, Don Trill's on that list. You know, so I'm not doing that to troll. Like, you really, you know, kept us together, and I appreciate y'all. And it's so funny, man. Y'all beat us, and then I joined y'all. Man, call me LeBron James. Wow. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man, any special shout-outs, man, before I let you go, Keith, man? Um, You know what? I'm going to shout-out to any parent that allowed me to coach their kid. That's that's my, my biggest shout-out. Um that you you trusted me to to you know guide your kid in any fashion like that that I don't know man it's just shout out I'm I'm big on parent support man I I I think it's big and for anybody that watches this man man just stay involved in your kid's life man just it's 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 big it's huge yeah yeah man there we go, man. We got my boy Keith on here. He's a legend. He's the founder of the Wisconsin Scholars. Stop playing the Wisconsin Scholars AAU program. Make sure y'all tune in, like, comment, and subscribe to the Barcode Podcast. Again, Keith, I appreciate you so much, man, for pulling up, bro. And don't forget, y'all, set the bar and stick to the code. Q Bar and Keith out. I love you, man. Just touched down, back on road, counting money, man, you know how it goes. Hit the VIP and tell my strike a pose. Hop in mode, hop in mode. Touchdown, man, we back on road. Spending money, man, you know how it goes. Hit the VIP and tell my strike a pose. Hop in mode, hop in mode. Don't forget, set the bar, stick to the code.